All right, we've got exercise 5B here in chapter 4, and I've got three versions for you here. I would suggest using either version 1 or version 2. Version 3, it uses arrays, and I don't think you get to that until chapter 6 of the book that accompanies this book. So it might be best to use chapter or version 1 or version 2. And I'll scroll around here so you can see all of them. This is the pseudocode. See version 2 here. Version 3. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to to kind of look at what's going on here. I'll go over the pseudocode um, more in depth. I won't really go over the flow charts too much. Just save on time here. I'm just going to scroll around, but the pseudocode, it'll explain a lot. So you can see how we're inputting the rest of the information here. And if the bid is over 150, we output the information. Otherwise, we just ask input again. So this is version 2. First one uses a while loop. This one uses a do while loop. So we've got sort of a similar setup. Only when the loop comes back around, it starts here. And we need to check if it, the input is uh, 0 or not, right after the input. So we're not going to be, if it is, we don't want to ask all of this, you know, other stuff, description, input days, you know, bid. But if we do and we go through all that and bid is greater than 150, we output all the information. But if at the beginning with ID you hit a zero, then you just stop. And then we've got the third one here. The declarations for the first and second versions are the same, but the third version has more. It uses the same four, but there's more on top of that. And this one also has a do while loop to start. And you'll notice that when we ask for the information, there's this little thing here for each, because each of those entries are going to be stored in a specific spot in an array. So we've got description days, bid, we need to increment by one each time we go through this do while loop as well. Both with the total counter and with the, you know, i. So while it is zero, we exit. And then we're going to output the information, obviously. If the bid is greater, or if that specific spot in the array is greater than 150, then we output the information, and once the for loop is done, we stop. So let's go back to the pseudocode here. Version 1, you can see the declarations. There's only four of them. Uh, we ask for the ID. While it's not zero, we ask for the rest of the information. If the bid is over 150, we output all that information. And then we ask for the ID again, and if it's zero, we end. Version 2. Same four uh, variables. Do ID, you know, ask for that. If it's not zero, if we do enter zero, we just want to jump right to this check here for this condition to exit. <clears throat> but if it's not, we ask the rest. If the bid's over 150, then we output the information. Both versions one and two output the results each time the loop is run. And that's why I like version three the most, is because all the information is put out at the very end. So we don't have to scroll back through all of our inputs and outputs and find each individual item. We just have all of our outputs one after another at the end. And so you can see how we have way more variables here. I for each specific spot in any given array. C for the total number of auctioned items we're gonna enter. Um, we do have an ID array to store all the IDs in. Same with days, to store all the length of auction days. Uh, all the bids will be stored in a bid array, and all the descriptions in a description array. If you want more information on this, like how to set up arrays, I do have another video called Sort to Arrays in the Extra C++ uh, playlist, and that helps a lot. I go into a lot more detail with this. 
but uh, we're going to start with asking the ID. If it's not zero, we ask the rest of the information while also storing each of our inputs in a specific spot. So they're all going to start at spot zero because arrays start at zero. And then each time we go through, the next time it'll be storing in spot one, and then spot two. But after each time we go through the loop, we're going to increment by one for each i and c. And then when we exit, we're going to use a for loop to output all that information. And if the if the bids for each i like if an item has a bid over 150, that will output. If it's not, then we won't. So. Let's go up here to the code. Um, we'll start off with, I'll kind of highlight this first one here, and we'll run the program. So the ID uh, one description, this is cool. Number of days 10, 151. See it outputs it. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do uh, this is cool. It's cool. And then I'm going to do auction number of days 10. I'm going to have the bid going below 150 so you can see it doesn't output. Now we're going to go into the do while loop. So I'm going to enter the sentinel value to exit version number one. So we can see that version number one works. But we're going to go into version number two now. And this is a do while. So it's going to operate the same. It's just this looks different, but it's going to work basically the same. So one. This is cool. I'm going to keep using that. Uh, day is 10, 175, and we've got an output. Let's do that again, and let's have uh, a different bid, 120, no output. So let's hit the Sentinel value there. Let's go into version 3. And this one I do like a lot because, and I'm going to clear the console real fast. Command K, but it's still remembering that I need to enter an ID. So we'll start at 1. Enter a description. This is the first item. Okay. Number of auction days, 10. And the bid will be 177. See, now there's no output there. It's storing everything to output later on. So item number 2. Um, this is the second item. Days 12, bid is 188. Okay, three, description, this is the third item. Number of days, 15, bid is gonna be 190. And let's do one that doesn't match up to the minimum bid requirement. So this, is the fourth. Oh. Well, now I don't know how to spell anymore. Let's do that. Uh, this is the next item. That's embarrassing. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> this is the next item. Uh, number of auction days, 20. It doesn't really matter. This one won't be displayed anyway, so my lack of knowing how to spell at this moment is all right. Okay, so we've got four items there, but it's only going to put out three. I'm going to go ahead and, no, I'm going to keep, actually, I'm going to keep all these up. Let's do the Sentinel value. And enter. So we can see all of this. I entered all of this, four items, Sentinel value. Now it's outputting all of the ones that meet the requirement for having a bid over 150. Item one, first item, item two, item three, and there's no item four because item four, the bid was 120. So this one's nice. You could actually get to this last part here, push command K, you know, clear everything out, then hit a zero and enter, and you'll get all of your items there that meet that requirement. And if you want to put all of them, if you don't want a requirement, you, you can take out this if statement here. But that's the, I like this one the most. Um, I do want to make note of something up here. There are some issues you can you might have when you go to, and I think I have them on all of the versions, when you go from ID to description, and ID is an integer, it's declared as an integer, 
description is declared a string. So with string, in order to have spaces like a sentence, you want to use get line, cn, comma, description, because that's what you're asking for is that variable. And you need to have this in front of it. This is saying forget, it's basically telling the program, don't worry about how you've prepared for an integer variable. I'm going to switch it up on you now. Be prepared. We're, we're about to use a string variable now. So this is very important. That the place the placement of this is very important. And this should allow you to use spaces and have a sentence and periods and commas and stuff. So something I wanted to make note of. Anyway, I believe that's it for this problem. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.